This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this lecture is on semi-variable costs, and I explained in the previous lecture what we meant by semi-variable costs, and we looked at a very simple example at the end on what we call the high-low method, where we're separating what are the fixed costs and what are the variable costs per unit. Well, in this uh, chapter, we will revise high-low, but I'll also explain why it's perhaps not a terribly uh, safe method. And we'll look at a better method called regression analysis, which, as you'll see, does require quite a few more numbers. But first of all, um, let's think again of the high-low method. Uh, and in the previous chapter, we had a very simple one. I just gave you two levels of production and the associated costs. But look at example one. Electricity costs for the first six months of the year are as follows. So perhaps every month we've checked how many units did we produce and what was the total cost. So in January we produced 340, the cost was 2260. In February we produced a few less, 300, and the cost was a bit less, 2160, and so on. Uh, well, again, um, clearly it's not a fixed cost per month, they keep changing. Uh, but equally, it's not a perfectly variable cost per month. I'm not going to waste time, but if you go through and divide, the cost per unit in January, if it was variable, it would be 2260 divided by 340. If it was variable, it would be the same in June. But if you do check, in fact, the change. So again, it's semi-variable. Part of the cost is fixed. I don't know, maybe it's a thousand a month. The rest of the cost is variable. I don't know, maybe five dollars a unit. That's what we have to find out. And with high-low method, all we do is this. We say, which was the month when we had the highest level of production? The highest level of production was April, where it was 420. So in April, we produced 420 units. And what was the cost? It was 2,400. We then said, which was the lowest level of production? Well, looking down, 340, 300, 300. Yes, the lowest one was in February, where we produced 300 units, and the cost was 2160. So we take the highest and the lowest, forget all the others, and rather importantly, it's the highest and lowest of what we call the independent variable. And what do I mean by that? With two variables, the units produced and the cost. Well, one depends on the other. So if you're unsure, ask yourself, does the production depend on what the cost is? Or does the cost depend on how many we produce? Well, surely the cost will depend on the production. The cost is therefore the dependent variable because it depends on how many we produce. So you take the highest and lowest of the one that we're depending on, the independent variable, which may not be the same as the highest and lowest cost. I'm not going to waste time checking. Doesn't matter, it's the highest and lowest of the independent one, the production. And having got that, we then carry on exactly as before. We say, well, looking at those two, any fixed cost would be the same. So the only reason one side than the other, it's because of the extra variable cost of the extra units. So how many extra units are there? There were 120 extra units. And what was the extra cost? 2400 minus 2160 is 240. So 240 
is the extra variable cost of the extra 120 units and therefore the variable cost per unit Two hundred and forty for one hundred and twenty extra units is two dollars per unit. So there is the variable cost. We also want to know what the fixed cost per period is. Well, check back to the last section if you need, but go but to either of these two. Doesn't matter whether you go to the high one or the low one. If I go to the high one. We know what the total cost is, 2,400, and that's the total of the fixed and the variable. We now know what the total variable cost is. The high one, there are 420 units, and we've calculated it's $2 a unit, a total of 840. And since the 2,400 is the total of the fixed plus the variable, the fixed must be the difference what is the difference? I shouldn't mean my calculator 16, I think it's 1560 here per month uh, I did say but you mustn't waste time in the exam, you'll be under time pressure you can check that if you look at the low one. The low one is 300 units. Well, at a variable cost of $2, that would give 600. Add on the fixed cost of 1560, and there we are, 2160. But don't waste time in the exam, however, however quick it seems. Now that's fine. We've already been through that approach, just to appreciate it's this whole series of them, how I got the highest and lowest. But I've left space over the page um, uh, for the problems with the high low. And the problem is this. In a perfect world, fixed costs would be fixed each month at here 1560. Variable costs would be exactly $2 a unit uh, more. Units, more cost. But if you did actually put all these months on a graph, just suppose I did a little graph showing the total cost as against the production. Now I'm not going to draw a perfect graph here by any means, and you wouldn't be asked to in the exam. But, you know, in January you produced 340 units and the total cost was 2260. Boom, boom. In February you produced 300 units, which let's say about there, and the cost was 2160, let's say about there, and so on. You could go plotting them all, and if you did, you'll find it looks something like this. The point is, although in a perfect world, it would be a precise straight line, as I explained in the previous chapter. In the real world, things aren't perfect. You know, you'd expect it to look more or less a line, but you wouldn't expect everything to be exactly perfect. Some months it may cost a bit more than it should. Some months it may cost a little bit less. You know, uh, I think you can uh, see what I'm getting at. If not, check February, March, April, May. check every month. And just check at $2 a unit plus 15.60. Do we get the right figure? Look at January. January, 340 units at $2 a month would be 6.80. Add 15.60. Total cost should be 2.240. Oh, here it's 2.260. And again, in the real world, things aren't perfect. And what have we done? To estimate, we've taken the lowest and the highest production, and we've treated it as though it was linear. I said, fair enough, nothing's perfect. Some months may be a bit higher, some months a bit lower. 
Now that's fine. But the big danger by just taking the highest and lowest, it could be that everything was beautifully linear, but maybe the highest just happened to be something went wrong, it was a bit unusual. Well, all we did, we took the lowest and the highest. Whoops. And of course, what we end up with is nothing like what it was. You know, in fact, it looks as though, you know, they could all be exactly on a straight line. But the highest one be unusually high. Well, surely, taking between the lowest and the highest is a bit dangerous. It's easily distorted if either the highest or the lowest are unusually high or unusually low. What we've done is perhaps rather dangerous. But you see, we can't tell at a glance. We're not going to waste time drawing a graph. But there is the big problem with high-low. By taking those two extremes, it could end up giving a very distorted answer. And that's why a much better approach, even though a lot messier, is something called regression analysis. And what regression does, you get some formulae, and all you need is to be able to use the formulae, as I'll show you. But rather than just look at the highest and lowest, effectively what it does is it finds the line that most nearly goes through all of the observations. It looks at the distances away and finds a line that gives the minimum of them. In fact, it squares the distances and finds a minimum. Some people call it least squares analysis. Now that's all fairly irrelevant to you because you get people formulae. But as you'll see, regression analysis, the object's the same to get the variable cost and the fixed cost. But instead of just looking at the two extremes, it looks at all the values and effectively finds a line that most nearly goes through them. Now, as usual, instead of having a lecture that goes on too long, I will stop there. We've dealt with high-low. In the next lecture, I'll show you how we use uh, regression analysis on the same sort of problem.